today I'm cooking a classic Russian favorite, borscht. It's a beet soup made with so many other vegetables, potatoes, cabbage, carrots, onions, garlic, celery, and the best way to serve it is with black bread, sour cream, and lots of fresh herbs. Hi guys, it's Olga. It's Monday and I'm starting off the week by making a big pot of borscht. My boys happen to love this soup. It's their absolute favorite. Since there are so many ingredients in the soup, it does take a little bit of prep work, but I think it's totally worth it. First of all, because it tastes amazing. And second of all, because I can get lots of nutrients into my children. <laughs> The way that I like to make borscht is to prep all of the ingredients ahead of time. That way when I'm actually making the soup, it takes no time at all. Whenever I do meal prepping, I tell my husband that I'm doing this as a favor to the future Olga. I feel like I'm my own personal sous chef the next day. My favorite borscht is based on chicken broth, but it also has some beef. So I'm actually cooking beef in my Instant Pot behind me that I started earlier. And while that's gonna cook, I'm gonna cook everything else. And by the, by the time the beef is cooked through, I'll just add it at the very end. I also have chicken broth that I made earlier. So basically all I'm gonna do is saute the vegetables and then start adding everything else into the soup. This way I don't have to wait for the chicken broth to cook and the beef broth to cook. I'm gonna start everything simultaneously and bring it all together. And like I said, it really cuts down on how long everything takes. I'm gonna add onions. And this is a lot of onions. I'm not gonna add all of them, of course. So some of this is gonna be for other meals throughout the week. And then I also have celery. A lot of borscht recipes actually don't use celery. I don't think celery was a very popular ingredient back in the day in Russian cooking, but I love the flavor that it adds to soup, so I always add it. And carrots. I'm not gonna add all of this. Like I said, this is for other meals that I'm gonna make throughout the week too. So I got this going. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper and get it nice and tender. Mm, it's already starting to smell so good. So now I'm just gonna add the chicken broth that I made yesterday. And it's so concentrated and rich because I added a ton of vegetables to it too. So now I'm just gonna wait for the broth to come to a boil and then I'm gonna add the potatoes. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start tackling these beets and beets will stain your hands. So I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> for borscht, you can use either cooked beets, roasted beets or raw beets. So I've used every single kind of option and I think all of them are great. My personal preference is roasting the beets. So I just put it into a parchment cooking bag and I cooked it in the oven until it became soft. And then look how easily the skin just peels right off. I use a paper towel and the skin just peels right off. What I love about roasting beets is that it really concentrates the flavor of the beets and makes them so much more richer and sweeter. It's so delicious. And you also don't lose any of that beautiful, vibrant color of the beets um, if you cook it in water. Sometimes it tends to do that. So I really like roasting them. I really like the texture and the flavor of the beets if you roast them first. But like I said, sometimes I just do them raw, just peel the beets grate them and then um, I do the exact same thing except I don't cook them as, as long because roasted beets are already cooked obviously. So all I'm gonna do is just grate them on this grater and I really like it because it makes them really fine. You can use any kind of grater that you like. You can actually cut the beets. I've done that too. Like I said, tackle it any way you want to. It's your borscht. I grate the beets right into the skillet because I don't add any oil to it so I don't have to heat it up first and this way it'll cut down on some of the dishes. I don't have to grate it into a separate dish then wash the dish. It just goes right into the skillet and onto the stove. <laughs> there are a few secrets to having a really vibrantly red borscht. One of them is not to overcook the beets. So what I do is I cook them separately in a skillet 
and I cook them completely before I add them to the borscht at the very end when everything else is done cooking and I just basically stir it all together and turn it off. Another is to add acid, so either lemon juice or vinegar. If I have lemons in the house, I like to use lemons because I like the flavor that it gives, but vinegar is fine too, just distilled white vinegar. I also really like adding a tomato product to the beets, so either tomato sauce, crushed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, all of them work. I've used all of them at some point or other. I also add just a tiny bit of sugar. This will help to balance the acidity of the tomatoes and the lemon juice or vinegar that you're using. At this point, I also season the beets with salt and pepper, and I cook them all the way through. When I'm using roasted beets, then they're already cooked, so I don't have to cook them long at all. I basically just saute everything together. I'm gonna add garlic at the very end and then add it to the soup. When I'm using raw beets, I'll add some water to it to cover it up and cook it for a while until the beets are cooked through. If you like the beets to be a little bit more crunchy, cook them a little bit less. If you like them softer, cook them longer. Just as long as you don't cook them for a long period of time in the borscht itself, it's gonna be fine. If at any point the beets start sticking to the skillet, and this happens a lot more often when you're starting out with raw beets because they're cooking much longer, just add a little bit more water and it'll deglaze the skillet. When the beets are cooked all the way through, clear a space in the center of the skillet and add the garlic, cooking it for about a minute. Cooking the garlic like this will give it a more mild garlic flavor, and the longer you cook it, the more mild it will be. I know there are some people who add raw garlic to the borscht at the very end of cooking, but in this case, the borscht will have a very strong garlic flavor. I personally prefer to cook mine a bit so that I don't knock anyone over with my breath later. If you ever want to prep potatoes in advance, make sure to cover them with water so they don't turn brown. I covered them with water, put them in my fridge overnight, and they're completely fine, especially if you're using them for soup. I don't usually do this more than a day in advance. It's a real time saver, so you can do this for lots of other potato recipes. The chicken broth is boiling, so I'm gonna add the potatoes to the borscht. I've seasoned my broth and I've tasted it before, so I know that it has enough salt, but at this point, make sure there's enough salt and pepper and season it how you like it. So that way the potatoes are gonna taste good too. The potatoes are almost done cooking, so I'm gonna add the cabbage at the very end so it doesn't completely disintegrate in the soup. And if you're using a really fresh green cabbage, just keep that in mind that it only needs a few minutes to cook. If you're using a cabbage that's more white in color, that means it's a little bit older, so it might take a little bit longer to cook, so you can add it earlier in the process. When the beef has finished cooking, strain the broth through a fine mesh sieve lined with a cheesecloth or a paper towel, and that way you'll get a really clear broth. You can add the broth to the borscht or save it to use in other recipes. You can add the meat to the borscht anytime whenever it's done cooking or add it at the very end, it doesn't matter. Keep cooking the borscht at a low simmer, covered, until the potatoes and cabbage are tender and cooked all the way through. Of course, taste it for salt and pepper and adjust it to however you like it. At the very end, add the beets to the borscht, mix it all together, bring it all to a simmer, and then it's done. This is also the time when I add more broth if it needs it. You can use some of that beef broth that you made or more chicken broth and just make it the consistency that you like. Look at how bright red this borscht is. It's so beautiful. And leftover borscht is even more delicious the next day than on the day that you made it because all of the ingredients marry together, all the flavors meld, and it's so good. Mmm. Oh wow, this is so good. I can just feel all those vitamins and nutrients as I'm eating each spoonful. I love the sweetness that the beets add to the borscht and then those potatoes and cabbage make it so hearty. Borscht is a perfect example of something that is so comforting and hearty but at the same time doesn't feel heavy at all. I hope you give this borscht a try because I think you will love it.